guys, just let me finish today. We're going to just talk about a couple of things on my channel, which some people have asked to cover, and I wanted to talk about them briefly. Um, one of the topics that people want to ask was about reincarnation. And as I explained to the individual, there is many, many different schools on reincarnation. And depending on which belief system you believe in, your opinions on what happens after you die will vary. Now, for example, a one concept in cultures that believe in karma, for example, says that your next position in life will be based upon the way you treated others in this life. Um, which means that you could come back as another human being or you can come back as a bacterium. Um, I think that would be kind of extreme. Um, but um, you could come back, so you know, you can come back as a single cell organism, you can come back as another human being. Or maybe even something grander than a human being. Who knows? Maybe a big blue whale. But um, in other forms of reincarnation, it's more limited um, that you will come back more than likely as a human being, but you can come back as a man or a woman. You could come back um, any color, any gender, any race, any part of the country, any part of the world. And your position in life is predetermined, again, by your behaviors and your faults in the past. Now, to understand this mentality, we need to understand, again, that there's this retribution thing. Remember when Jesus was asked about the blind man and they wondered well, who in his past had done some harm to cause him to go blind in the first place. The idea was is that the Pharisees were trying to say is what happened in the past, in this man's past family to cause him to not have sight. In other words, they're saying is, is because of some family events, it's affecting his life. Well, I don't believe in that myself because it sounds too unlike God that he would want to make a person suffer so unduly. But I believe in is that we ourselves make a life chart in advance. Silva Brown discusses this. Um, Rebecca Marina Messenger discusses it. Lumi Ann Finistro, which is me, discusses it. Okay? And in this life chart, we have set down some objectives of that we're trying to learn for to better ourselves and to have more awareness of the issues that affect humans on earth. Now, in the case of Michelle and me, one of the things is that we're going to look at our life charts as they are. They're separate. They're not the same life chart. Even though you might say is, yeah, but you guys are sharing the same body. Does not mean you have one life chart? No, it means we have two because there are two souls, not one soul. And each soul has their own life chart. My life chart and Michelle's life chart intersect because we are twin souls. Okay? Our life charts intersect because we share the same physical flesh. But we're not the same person. We are not the same at all. We're very different people. We have different desires, different likes, different dislikes, different thoughts, different mindsets. But 
we all acknowledge that the other loves us profoundly in ways that cannot be described to the non-conjoined. I mention conjoined because when you talk about conjoined twins that grow up as conjoined twins, there's a strong bond between you and your conjoined brother or sister. It's not just the physical, which is obvious. It's the emotional. The strong feeling of attachment. Okay. Um, we'll cover that in more detail in another video. But I want to get back to the, to the reincarnation thing for a minute. Because that's the main topic of this video. When you come in our faith system. Okay. When you come... When you go to heaven after your life has ended, your uh, your your soul lives on. It's energy. It doesn't die. It doesn't cease. Okay. And rather, instead, you go home. You go through a, uh, for lack of a better phrase, how about a welcoming home uh, group meets you. At the entrance to the other side, your um, spiritual advisors will sit down with you. Look, they'll open up the your life your life goals your life chart. Um, silver bronzes are on scrolls. I don't know if they be on scrolls. I mean, I think the other side has gotten a little more advanced in scrolls, but I'll leave that alone. Okay. No matter what, your, 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 your life advisor is going to look at your chart. They're going to say, okay, let me, did you achieve, do you think you achieved what you, uh, what you sought to learn? Um, in some cases, you got to be honest with yourself when you look back. Cause you'll be replaying the key parts of your life. You're going to be going, did I really come away with this what I wanted to learn or did I just totally mess it up you always have the option to remake it you can always come back again it's up to you you can always say well you know I think I messed up on that but I want to come back again but I want to have some knowledge some kind of deja vu that's what deja vu is from it's when you like Gee, didn't I go through this once before? That's probably why you get it. Because you did. And, uh, of course, that also includes when you're actually alive and you have the same experiences. Maybe you did something once before and you say, Gee, I did this once before, didn't I? Did I like the outcome? Yes? No? Uh, what can I do differently? If it was something I didn't do well and... You know, how can I improve upon it? Just dealing with a live every current life. If you're living a life, and let's say, for example, Michelle was like, well, I need a roommate. And this, she starts talking to this girl at the sim kitchen. And um, this girl is having some issues in her own life. And and he asked, and she asked her, she says, uh, do you currently have a place to live? And she said, yeah, I kind of do, but... I don't really feel comfortable living with men. And um, I really kind of would like to be in a better situation. So me and Michelle talked about this after Michelle talked to the girl because she was having some anxiety issues. So she wanted to go um, to the mental hospital and deal with her anxiety. Um, and I asked Michelle, what do you think about this? And she says, I don't know. She says, I've been through this before. It's not new. I mean, I take a roommate in. She doesn't have the kind of resources that I'm really looking for. She's got emotional issues in her life that I don't know how to handle. And... Um, I want to help her out because she's a she's a guy she's a nice person, but I don't think my apartment is going to be conducive to her recovery. 
She she was shocked because she's done through this before with people. She's more than willing to pick things through and say to herself, "Is is this really going to be practical? If so, why do I feel it's not going to be?" Um, but then, of course, Michelle, like I said, she Michelle looked at the thing and she, she said, "No, it's just not going to work because." I don't feel I'm ready to, uh, uh, I don't feel I can help her and I don't feel I could be a good enough resource for her. Michelle said quietly in the past to another lady friend, she says, what I'm looking for in a roommate is I'm looking for a roommate that is, um, is responsible, is capable of managing on their own spiritually and emotionally. A person that doesn't require uh, me to act like a like a nanny, um, babysitter kind of thing, where I can basically trust the person enough to come home and eat and take care of their own needs, and at the same time be responsible to pay the rent or her share of the rent or his share. Well, Michelle's looking for a female roommate, but Michelle said, "Well." I would be willing to consider a man roommate, but unfortunately, they have to be really, really, um, uh, pretty well, you know, make things work. Um, but anyway, so you learn these skills in the past and you build upon them. And so when you, so the same thing happens when you die. When you die, you go home to the other side. You'll go see the life chart. Your life chart says, okay. Your life, you know, advisor says, oh, would you like to try to go back and improve on your skills that you did? Maybe come back as a different person. Maybe come back as a, the opposite gender or opposite sex. Your gender technically is always the same. It's Your gender is never going to change. Uh, but that's a whole nother video. But just to say right now, if you're a female spirit, you're going to remain a female spirit. You're not going to become a man spirit. But biologically, you can come back as a man or woman. Okay? Um, and the reason that's because is to help you to improve and to learn more about the human condition from um, bio the other biological state. Now, my spirit Incidentally, for those of you who don't know, is a masculine spirit. Michelle's is feminine. So you got this divine mask, I mean, you got this masculine and feminine, the yin and the yang symbol, Chinese um, um, mysticism here, the yin and the yang. Okay, so you got the masculine spirit, which is mine, you got the feminine spirit, that's Michelle, and we're sharing the same flesh, which is a uniquely designed uh, system. Um, that com is com makes it work for both of us. But the point here is, let's remember this, is that so you have the option to come back to either one. Okay? So, the question that stands out is this. If you screw up in this life, because of your mistakes or by your fault and what you've done and what you failed to do. The Divine Mother and Father God are always going to be there to help you out. And you always have a chance to do it again. And you can redo it as many times as it takes. You don't necessarily have to come back to Earth to do it here. You can even do the equivalent of taking a correspondence course and do it in the classroom on the other side through educational medium instead of actually physically coming back to Earth to do it here. Earth is one of the hardest environments. It's a fully immersible educational experience. There are other places humans can go, but we come here to Earth because um, when most of us are familiar with Earth because we grew up here all of our lives. We know it's a tough classroom and we love Earth, we love Earth very much. It's very special to us. Um, but, you know, we don't have to go to Earth. We have 
an infinite number of planets in the solar system that are suitable for our soul to live on. Uh, and granted, on some planets, we may not look the same as we do now because we have to be uh, physically different enough to live in that ecosystem. But it doesn't mean that we're any less sentient and intelligent. It just means, for example, if we have green tentacles and and stuff like that, for example, maybe it's because that's what, in that planet, that's what you need. But it doesn't mean that you're not a thinking, living, sentient creature. Um, so you come back, if you do decide to come back to Earth, the same situation, um, to re improve on the things that you messed up on, you can change the, the life chart in advance so that you can maybe make the make it a little easier or maybe maybe a little, maybe maybe might want to make it more tougher maybe the course that you're taking is too easy maybe you want to go to the next level of complexity um michelle for example on the other side is a teacher me on the other side i'm also a teacher I'm a spiritual teacher on the other side. Michelle is a uh, physical s sciences teacher. In other words, Michelle's life chart is uh, based on her personal experience on the other side. Is she's a, she's a researcher. She's a knowledgeable person. She loves study and she loves learning. So she took what she loves to do on the other side and took it into this life to add to this current life's existence. So, um, you, you, we can use what we have on the other side. There are certain pieces of our life chart that we can take from the other side back with us. And some of it is some of the innate knowledge of the past. Um, and that means past lives. It's like I said, the deja vu thing. If you realize you, that something doesn't seem right, you can stop and ask yourself, gee, um... Did I do this right last time, or did I screw up badly? And then, thinking about it, we might say, you know what? I'm going to try something different this time. And that, my friends, is what makes it different than the Hebrew concept of karma. And the fact is that you do not have to have been a, um, a cursed because of a family event that happened in the past. Or in the kind of in Hindu that you have to come back as a lesser quality person because of some mistake in the past. All life is precious in the eyes of mother and father God. All life. It doesn't matter what kind of life you are. Your life is precious. A couple days ago, people asked me and Michelle if we would speak up on the behalf of Black Lives Matter. We don't have enough specific material on the Black Lives Matter movement itself. We do know about the civil rights movements from the 60s. We do know what was being pushed on the people in the South and the black communities. We understand and respectfully agree it was not appropriate behavior for no 20th century whatsoever and that it was wrong that the, there was so much the Jim Crow laws were so wrong. No doubt about that. So in some ways, the Black Lives Matter movement is an extension of the, re the civil rights movement from the 60s. That is, they want equal rights. They want equal protection under law. They want equal pay. They want equal speech. 100% right. And you are entitled to have that. And I will, and me and Michelle have both agreed on this. We will advocate for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're black, Hispanic, German, Italian, Dutch, whatever. It doesn't matter. You are going to always have our support. Regardless of your color, your race, your creed, your religion your background. We don't care. You're a child of the Divine Mother and Father God. And so for that reason, you will always be respected and loved 
by both of us. 100%. No questions asked. Now, um, I also, Michelle also said something, or was it me? I think I said it. I don't know if you said it, I said it, but I think we both did. We, did, we both mentioned it two times. Okay, um, I'm not going to get into too much detail of this, but here we go. Take a knee. In the Catholic Mass, during the presentation of the Sacred Host, we kneel in adoration of the Sacred Host which is the body and, of course, the chalice, which is the cup of the blood of the Christ. Now, if this case is, are we saying to the American flag that we love you more than we love God? Because when the priest enters into the church during the entrance, we stand and face the priest as he walks from the entrance of the church to the um, sanctuary, okay, uh, the, di the diocese or the uh, sacristy. This is, again, we still respect and venerate the priest because he is indeed a spokesperson speaking for the behalf of the disciples, okay, and yet we don't kneel to the priest. We kneel to the sacred host in the body of Christ. So therefore, the question is, is if we're standing to attention to the flag, we're giving respect to many men and women who have served this country, who have died for this country, who died but loved this country. But when we kneel, are we saying that we love the flag more adamantly and more deeply than we love the Christ? This country was based upon the principles of a Judeo-Christian country. But this country also still loves and respects the freedom, the religious faith. Everybody can choose your own religious faith. As long as your faith does not infringe upon the faith requests and feelings of other people. That's pretty hard to do in this day and age. We see so much of that where people are doing just that. But the take a knee thing is, to me, is saying is, we love the almighty flag more than we love our almighty God and goddess, mother and father God. Um, it's up to you. I would love to hear your opinion on what taking knee really represents to you because that's the way I'm getting out of it. Sorry, guys. I don't love the flag more than I love Mother and Father God. I love Mother and Father God above the flag. So I will continue to stand in respect of the flag. But I will kneel in the presence in the body and blood of Christ. If you were to tell me to stand in the presence of the body and blood of Christ, I would be extremely upset. Because the body and blood of Christ is, to me, is the most sacred thing. Now, I'm Lutheran, Michelle's Roman Catholic, but that doesn't mean that we don't have an understanding of the meaning of the body and blood of Christ and the Eucharistic sacrifice of which he did when he said, to his disciples at the Last Supper, when he blessed the bread and gave it to his broken pieces, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body. And when the supper was ended, he filled a cup with wine, blessed the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that the sins may be forgiven. And somebody said, 
I think it was Peter who said, Lord, I will not drink their cup. I will not take their blood. He said, but ah, Peter, if you do not take my blood or drink my, or do not eat my bread or flesh or drink my blood, you cannot receive salvation. But I think that was pretty simple. It's through my sacrifice and accepting of my sacrifice that you will be made pure and perfect, unblemished. Now, to understand the unblemished part, you have to understand that in the Hebrew world, during the Passover, an unblemished, pure lamb or dove will be sacrificed at the temple for the, for the sins of the Jewish people to take knowledge of the fact that, Jesus, that Yahweh spared the lives of the Hebrew children at the time he sent his angel down of death down to smite all the Egyptian children that did not have the blood above the door. That's important, folks. That's important. So for me and Michelle, it was agreed the same thing. If you ever ask us to take a stand during the presence of the Eucharistic body and blood, we will never stand. We will always kneel or prostrate ourselves in front, in front of the Blessed Sacrament always maybe we haven't gone to mass lately but that doesn't mean that we don't love the body and blood of Christ it's just that would uh, sometimes it's also another issue too um, in this lifetime is because of Michelle's hearing loss enjoying going to mass with the new changes that were done to the mass it's very hard. Michelle has been trying to practice the Mass, trying to understand the Mass. The changes since the original Novi Ordo from 1973 addition to the 2011 changes to the Mass that are specified by Pope Benedict the 16th. There is a lot of changes, and one of the things was so many entrance lines are much closer to the original Missa Romanium, but unfortunately, the um, it makes it really hard because the translations, the way some of the verbiage is done, is really awkward. Uh, we have a copy of the Mass here, and we could play, we could actually read it to you. Uh, it's also available. I believe in the Pope Pius Society, and I think a few other websites as well. Very, very interesting. But for those of us who grew up with the 1973 edition of the Novi Ordo, it is totally, totally shocking. Uh, it's it's hard to wrap ourselves around. Now, because Michelle is not, um, you know, against the Catholic Church, she loves the Catholic Church. She loves the institution of the Catholic Church. Um, and she respects the door things in the Catholic Church as an institution that are flawed. But it's still very deeply special to her. So, I'm just going to say is, um, as far as reincarnation goes, as far as the skills you go um, through in life, the educations that you experienced in the past, the educations and skills you have from the other side that you bring to earth, all of this is interconnected in our faith system. Now, maybe your faith system is different than ours, and we're willing to talk about that differences. I never said we never would. So let's have that dialogue. Let's talk about it. How does your faith system compare to my faith system? How do you feel about the way you see reincarnation versus the way I see it? How do you see what happens after you die? How do you see about, uh, let's talk about another thing that's related to reincarnation, suicide. And uh, we'll just make this quick. Uh, suicide is basically a person 
the quit button on a video game. Sorry, I need to tell you what happens when you press the quit button on a video game. You don't advance to the next level. You're stuck. You get to come back, and you get to play the video game all over again from beginning to end. Even if you tried to save the game. In this game, in case this example, there's no game saves. So, you never get a chance to get to the next level until you overcome all the other prior levels. That's suicide, folks. That's pressing the quit button on a video game. Don't think you're going to get to the next level just because you press the quit button. It doesn't happen that way in video games. It doesn't happen that way in life. And it certainly doesn't happen that way in suicide. So, if you want to progress to the next level, you've got to keep playing the game until you reach that magic level. And you will reach it. And sometimes, because of reasons that are many and far between, maybe it's not going to happen in one lifetime. But, just like in a video game, right? You know, sometimes there's some sneaky guy comes up behind you, shoots in the back of the video game, right? And so you may start out the game with three people, and all of a sudden you're down to two. So now, we're still playing the game, but now you've only got two you left. The next time, you happen to get yourself... Uh, skewered by by an arrow in the game. Or maybe you get electrocuted by an electric fence or something like that in the game, right? And you still got one person left. You didn't quit the game because you didn't quit the game. You're still playing the game. And even when the game says game over, unlike the video game, you can always come back and finish the game where you left off. Because your life chart for the next life, if you choose to come, can be amended to allow you to continue where you left off in the game. Isn't that totally mind-blowingly awesome? You don't have to feel this because your life is in despair that you will never overcome your limits. Anybody who truly loves life, anybody who truly loves the educational experience, anybody who truly believes in themselves will always come back stronger, better, and faster than before. Always. And that's the way it works 100% of the time. All right, guys. So um, keep in contact with me. Please like, share this video with your friends, family. Um, let's have a dialogue. Let's talk about this stuff. All right?